Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Electro Optic Systems. It has been about, I'd say about nine to 10 months since I did a last video on this company. So it would have been May 2023. And in fact, when I did that video, someone complained that I kept pumping up this company. And that's understandable that someone might think that because from 2019, I think it was late 2019, early 2020, to when I did that video in May 2023, the share price of this company fell from about $10 all the way down to as low as 60 cents, maybe even lower than that, maybe 50, 40 cents. And the video I did in May 2023 was in regards to the share price of this company breaking out. And the sentiment in the company had been turning, went from severely a negative to say neutral to possibly positive uh, in May of last year. Now, without doubt, the sentiment in this company has shifted to being quite positive for a few obvious reasons. Now, I'm a little bit biased when it comes to this company. I've always been fascinated by what this company does and the potential of this company. For those who don't know anything about electro optic system, they have two divisions, which is the defense uh, system and space systems. I'm probably more intrigued by the space systems, which includes space and communications, uh, operates as two entities, space technologies and EM solution. Space technology specializes in applying uh, their developed optical sensors and effectors to detect, track and characterize objects in space. I've always been fascinated by that, by the defense systems um, specialize in creating and manufacturing technologies for weapon systems optimization and integration. Now, one of the reasons, in fact, the main catalyst for me doing this video today is around the company receiving uh, a, a, an ASX price and a volume query because the share price of this company over the last few trading days, and I'm recording this video at 8.42 a.m. on February 13th, Share price of this company has completely taken off on greater volume. So there is increased interest in this company right now. Now, I'm going to touch upon this particular price and volume query because they do try to explain to the ASX why there might be increased interest in this company and I'm not even sure why the company did receive this query because it's quite obvious to my eyes why, even though I'm a little bit biased, why there is increased interest in this company. Now let's go back in time to the last time I did a video on this company. So in May 2023, I did a video, the last video uh, titled May 2023 breakout, and then someone replied, why do you keep pumping up this company? This is the dog stock, blah, blah, blah. And people tend to be um, have recency bias. So because the share price of this company was in a significant downtrend, had fell a lot, over the previous few years, there's going to be a lot of negative sentiment around this company. And the main thing when it comes to being an investor is you've got to detach your emotions away from your decision making. So when I looked at the chart and saw the share price of this company starting to move out of that uptrend uh, or downtrend, that was a really good sign. So let's have a look at the chart the last time I did a video on this company. So this is the chart last time I did a video. So this would have been almost a one-year chart going from about uh, June, July 2022 through to May 2023. And the bottom or the drop, the low in the share price for this company was reached around about September of 2022. That was capitulation. More than likely, they released a negative news or an announcement on that day. I can't remember what it was. So that was the start of September. Share price fell to around about 45 cents. Now, the share price did get a little bit lower back in March of 2023. In fact, it fell to about 42 cents. And then the company released something positive on April 1st or the start of April. Share price popped up. Share price then went sideways. No selling. That's a really good sign. So you can see between September and April, share price just went sideways. And then about uh, three weeks after that positive announcement, at start of April 2023, share price took off in three consecutive trade days on high volume. Not only that, the share price went above the previous high, which was in January 2023, and that high was at 80 cents. That's why I said this was a potential breakout, maybe not even potential breakout, um, for electro-optic system, just by looking at the chart and looking at the price action, and not only the price action, 
the volume action as well. A lot has happened to electro optic systems over the past nine months since May 2023, and most of those things have been positive, hence why the share price has more than doubled. In fact, the share price has really taken off, not only the share price, the volume has really taken off over the past week or so from when I'm recording this video on the morning of February the 13th. In fact, the company received, and this is the catalyst for me doing this video right now, the company received a price and volume query from the ASX, trying to understand why the share price has risen from $1.23.5 on February the 8th to a high of $1.64.5 on February the 12th. Now, typically when a company receives this sort of query from the ASX, the first thing that ASX wants to know is whether the company has any price sensitive information that they haven't yet released to the market. Uh, so essentially what the ASX is wanting to know, is there any insider trading possibly happening? Typically, and I'd say this is true in 99.999% of cases, the company says no. That's, so that's question number one. EOS is not aware of any information concerning it that has not been announced to the market, which if known by some in the market could explain the recent trading and security. So again, no insider trading. However, in question three, the company is asked, is there any other reasons that could explain the increase in interest in electro-optic systems? And that's when we get to the explanation or some of the possible explanations from the management of this company. For example, they actually say here, we do, however, draw your attention to the following recent announcements by the company. The first one is the Appendix 4C. And the second reason is an announcement on the 29th of January of the sale of Slinger counter drone systems for $15 million, which is actually a fairly low amount when you're talking about this company. So there are a few reasons that could be driving the increased interest in this company. And one of those reasons is the Appendix 4C, which I'll touch upon later in this video. And another reason could be just simply the market is understanding that this company is turning things around. And we do have new management. The new management have been in for a while. And I still remember um, watching uh, a briefing from the new management. That would be about a year ago. Maybe it was just over a year ago. And I was actually quite impressed by the new management. And that actually made me a little bit more comfortable. However, because of the debt of this company, uh, there was still a fair bit of risk when it comes to this company. So let's go back one year ago. So I just don't want to touch upon how this company has turned things around. And you can see the turnaround just by looking at the appendix four seats. So if you go back one year ago, let's have a look at the receipts of customers and how much cash this company was burning. So one year ago, the company received receipts from customers of 40.7 million. And the good thing is this company's calendar year and financial year are the same. So at the end of the December quarter, we also have the full year numbers. So year to date, receipts to customers, 144.6 million. And just look at the cash burn in operations, 13.9 million in the quarter and almost $50 million of cash burn in the full year. And end cash, 21.7 million, but more importantly, total debt of 147 million and the way this company were able to was able to maintain operations was increasing their debt so debt rose 20.3 million just in this one quarter so if we go back one year ago i'd be much less bullish around this company and to be honest with you the market was highly negative around electro optic systems just one year ago and then we had the breakout in electro optic systems back in May 2023. And we started to see signs things were turning around for this company just by looking at the March quarter results. So in this particular quarter, receipts of customers up to 62.1 million, yet the company went from burning a lot of cash in operations to producing cash in operations. In fact, in this particular quarter, they were operating cash flow positive 29 0.4 million, and they were able to increase in cash on hand to 45.5 million. So even in April of 2023, there were signs that this company was starting to turn things around. And this is one of the reasons why the share price of Electro Optic Systems broke out just after they released this Appendix 4C. Now let's have a look at the most recent quarter results for Electro Optic Systems the final quarter of the financial year, the December quarter, the most recent quarter. And you can just say by looking at the numbers, the top line, section 1.1, recessive customers, and the bottom line, section 1.9, 
cash flow from operations, we can see how this company has turned things around in the past year. December quarter results for financial year 22 are significantly different from this particular quarter. So we get an understanding why the share price has more than doubled in the past year. So recess to customers, up to 105.4 million in the quarter, $325.4 million for the full year. And look at the bottom line, operating cash flow positive, $34.5 million for the quarter. And for the full year, they've gone from being negative $50 million to positive $113.1 million. And maybe just as important, a lot of that operating cash flow has fallen to the bottom line and the cash on hand for this company is a solid $71 million. Now, the biggest red flag I have in regards to Electro Optic System is just their debt. So let's have a look at Section 7, which for some companies is probably the most important section of their Appendix 4C or 5B. For a lot of companies, I completely ignore Section 7 because they don't have any financing facilities, but you can't ignore this section for electro optic systems because this company has a fair bit of debt. In fact, their total financing facilities are at 166.6 million. Preferably, I'd like to see that dropping. Now, with the rise in share price and the valuation of this company, now we get to the point where the markup of this company is now greater than the financing facilities. And that's actually a big thing moving forward for electric optics systems. So they have a few financing facilities. Uh, the first one is with WH Salt Patterson, and they have had some problems with that financing facility. So they actually do mention this in the notes below, resolution of commercial dispute with lender WH Salt Patterson. So when I'm going through all the facilities for a company like Electro Optic Systems, the first thing I look at is how much the debt is or the financing facilities, and then how much the interest. So for example, if we look at the WH Salt Pattinson working facility, that debt or that uh, interest rate is at 15% annum. Uh, the term loan facility is an interest rate of 22% per annum. And this is one of the reasons why I don't want to see the debt get any higher than it is right now. In fact, I would prefer Electro Optic Systems if they could repay their debt because the interest repayments on this debt is going to be quite high. However, at this time, and if they can make, maintain this momentum moving forward, they should be able to repay that interest quite easily. Now, this is not all they have in Section 7. In fact, Section 7 goes to a second page, which is quite rare, unusual for companies releasing Appendix 4Cs or 5Bs, because most companies don't have too much financing facilities. So electric optic systems, Section 7 is really important. So if you do look at Appendix 4Cs for any company, including electric optic systems, Section 7 is definitely not one of those sections you should ignore or go straight past for this particular company. Now let's have a look at the receipts history for Electro Optic System. This is something I tracked for all companies that not only release their Appendix 4C or Fiber. This is something I tracked for all companies that don't have to release Appendix 4Cs or Fiber. And, the, and that's not receipts, however, that is revenue. However, the one thing I'm looking at, and the one reason I track receipts or revenue, is I want to see receipts or revenue growing through time. In fact, when I first start, start researching a company, that's the first thing I look at is revenue history. If I see revenue uh, going sideways or going down even through time, that's a major red flag. In fact, usually if I see that happening, I go on to the next company. So what we want to see with electro optic systems is receipts growing through time. That is telling us this company is growing and has the potential to grow even further in the future. And when you look at the 10 year history here, in fact, I've been tracking electro optic systems, uh, Penny's 4Cs since uh, the middle of 2013. So we're talking about almost 11 years. We can definitely see a pattern, particularly from 2018. So between 2013 and 2018, receipts were going sideways. In fact, I was not interested in this company during that period. I bought some shares in 2017 or 2018, and you can see in 2018, receipts absolutely took off. In fact, they went from 3.8 million or to a high of 141 million. Now, that $141 million in the December quarter of 2018 is a one-off, so you sort of can ignore that. So if we just ignore that, you can definitely see a pattern, but receipts are and can be quite lumpy for this company. Now, in saying that, you have noticed that receipts have grown from $30 million in the September quarter 
of 2022 up to $105.4 million in the most recent quarter, which is, if you disregard that uh, $141 million in the December quarter 2019, is the best quarter this company has experienced in their life. And the most important thing is we've seen consistent increase in receipts over the past six quarters. Doesn't mean that's going to continue over the next six quarters, but this is a good sign that this company has found some traction. Let's have a look at the updated chart for electro optic system. This goes back to May 2023. I intentionally started this particular chart at that time to coincide with the last video I did on this company, which was titled May 2023 EOS Breakout. Was that a breakout? Now, if you bought back in May 2023 when the share price of this company broke out and you've been patient and have held on to your shares in this company, you have done really well. You have doubled your money. But there have been periods of time where there's been a little bit of volatility, increase in volume, a little bit of increase in interest in the market around this company, particularly July and August of last year. Share price actually went to a high of about $1.30. And there was a long period of time between September of 2023 and January of this year when the share price did nothing. Not only did the share price do nothing during that period, volume started to weaken and go lower. So that's a sign, decreasing interest in the market. Not a lot of selling during that period either, which is actually a good sign moving forward. And then all of a sudden, interest in this company started to pick up around the time or coinciding with the company releasing their appendix 4C in late January. And the share price has completely taken off after that on massive volume. Now, maybe I'm being a little bit overdramatic saying massive volume, but when you compare the volume in the last few weeks, to the volume we saw between September and January, um, well, that period of time when the share price did absolutely nothing, you can see a difference. Now, my one concern or short-term concern around this company is we have seen the share price really increase significantly, hence the company receiving the price and volume increase from the ASX. The share price has increased 30% or over 30% in three successive days. No doubt there are day traders out there and sometimes when you do see this sort of trading, three big up days in a row, don't be surprised to see the share price drop 10% in one day. Now, day traders love volatility. And if we do see increased volatility, there is potential that we might see increased volatility moving forward. Now, the best thing that could happen to Electro Optic System share price moving forward from when I'm recording this video on the morning of February 13th, the market has just opened. The best thing that could happen is the share price goes sideways for about five, 10 days to force out all those day traders. Day traders get bored. Now that would be a good sign for a few reasons. I don't like day traders because they love volatility and they could um, really make the share price movement a little bit more volatile than I like. But if the share price goes sideways or even goes upwards slowly, that would be a really bullish sign. That would mean there's more demand out there to cover all the extra supply of those day traders taking profits or anyone else taking profits because the share price has doubled or more than doubled in the past year. So that would be a really bullish sign that there is still remaining a lot of demand for electro optic shares out there. So it remains to be seen what happens over the next few days, but the perfect setup for me is just to see the share price of this company go sideways. That's all I have for this video on Electro Optic Systems, my first video on this company in nine months. And if you think I am pumping up this company, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. So even if you think I am pumping up this company, you should not be taking any advice from me at all because I'm not an advisor. I have not accredited. So don't take any advice from me. I'm just sharing you ideas. Uh, so if you do need a financial advisor, make sure you find someone that is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.